Hi folks, welcome to this video on shifts of the demand curve. If you haven't already, please check out the other videos in this series on how to draw the demand curve and what it shows and on price elasticity of demand. In this video, we're going to be looking at what a shift of the demand curve shows and how they come about. The demand curve shows the relationship between the price and the quantity demanded. If the price is higher, then we say that people will buy less of a good or service because they can get more utility for their money on buying other things. But what if the conditions of demand change? What if things change in the market? What does that do to our demand curve? Well, a shift in demand shows where the conditions of demand for a good or service change it shows how the demand for that good or service is affected at each price. So in the diagram we've got here, we're starting off with D1, our original demand curve, okay? What we can see here is at a point on D1, if the price is P1, then we will consume Q1. But what might happen is that something might change in that market that affects how much people will buy at each price and that will be shown by a shift in the demand curve. For example, there could be a reduction in demand, a shift inwards of the demand curve. At each price, people are less willing and able to buy as much of the good or service as they did previously. So what we'd show that is a movement from D1 to D2. At every price level, the quantity that people will are willing and able to buy is lower than it was previously. Conversely, if conditions change and people are more willing and able to buy that good or service, we can show that through a shift outwards of the demand curve, an increase in demand. And this would be shown by D1 moving out to D3. What we have here is at the original price of P1, people would have been willing to buy Q1. Circumstances change. They're now willing to buy much more than they were previously. Okay, and it would follow that that would be the same across all prices. At all prices, people are willing and able to buy more than they were previously. So how do these shifts come about? Well, they come from all kinds of different sources. Every market is affected by so many external factors. One of the big ones that affects how much people can consume of each good or service is going to be their income. Sometimes if people's incomes rise, they will buy more of goods and services. That tends to be normal goods or luxury goods. And the reason for that is, well, people now have more disposable income. They can buy more things than they did previously, so demand increases. That's not true for every good. Some goods are what we call inferior. And that means that as people's incomes increase, they will switch to buying other better goods or services. So rather than maybe buying own brand supermarket baked beans, they might switch to Heinz instead. Okay, so one good Heinz might see an increase in demand as incomes rise, while another good own brand beans would see demand fall as incomes rise. Another factor is the price of other goods and services. Although it's not the price of this good or service changing, the price of other goods and services changing will influence how much people buy of those. And two terms you need to know here is a complement good, where two goods work together, or a substitute, which is where two goods can be used one instead of the other. A great example of complement goods is fish and chips. If the price of fish rises, people will buy less fish, but they will also, they're likely to buy less chips because the two go together. On the other hand, if things were substitutes, it might be the price of fish rises. People might go, oh, we're gonna buy less fish, but they might switch to buying something else. For example, pies, okay? So we could say they're substitutes. They can be used instead of each other. The price of fish rises, we'd see a shift outwards in the demand curve for pies. Over time, people's trends and tastes also change. Things might come into fashion and that might increase the demand for that good or service. Over time, things might also go out of fashion. They may become obsolete. And what that would mean is that demand for them falls. So again, something that can shift the demand curve over time. If firms don't feel that their good is selling enough, then they can undertake what's known as marketing. That's a group of strategies designed to encourage people to buy more of a good or service. And that in itself, whether it's successful, it could shift the demand curve outwards. 
unsuccessful or if a competition, a competitor product, it has a successful marketing campaign that might move the demand curve in for its rivals, for its substitutes. People's expectations of the future can also play a part. We saw this at the start of COVID or whenever fuel prices look like they're going to rise. People think that's going to cost more in the future or there might be a shortage of it. They rush out to buy those things and that in itself increases the demand. And yeah, if you think back to the start of the pandemic, there were shortages of of rice, of pasta, of toilet roll. And a lot of that came not because there was a lack of supply of it, but because the demand had rapidly increased because people thought it might run out in the future or they'd need more of it. The final one to mention is demographics. Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, this is the study of the population and how its characteristics change over time. We have an ageing population in the UK, so therefore we're going to see an increase in demand in goods and services that older people are going to consume. There's an increase in demand for, for healthcare, maybe for, uh, for luxury holidays, and you know, the firms will be paying close attention to what's happening with demographics in order to affect their marketing, but also so they can make sure that they have the supply to keep up with demand. In this video, I've mentioned supply a couple of times. That's something that works with demand to create the market mechanism. And that's the topic for our next video. See you there.